Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us here at Oak Ridge Student Ministries. My name is Jeff, and I'm the Youth and Young Adult Minister here at OPC. And this week, we're into our final week, week two, of our series called Direct Message. And I am so here for this series because it's all about something I want to know more about, and that is prayer. What I love about prayer is that it is our direct connection to God. It's like sending God a direct message. It's a chance to talk to God about anything and everything that's happening in our lives. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Talk to God? Don't I have to be super spiritual or, or something like that in order to do that? If that's what you're thinking, I get it. Because honestly, prayer can feel a little weird sometimes. There's just something about prayer that can be a little confusing. And when we think about prayer like that, it can almost feel impossible to even want to try and talk to God. Like if we can't figure out the most basic stuff about prayer, why should we even try? If we don't get it right, is our connection going to be lost? Well, here's some good news for you. There is a right way of praying. But before I tell you what it is, can we pause for a little science lesson? I know I told you guys how bad I am at science, but stick with this here. Did you know that there's a part of your brain that actually shapes your experience with God? That means that things like prayer can actually play a part in shaping your brain. Now, get ready for a big fancy science word. Well, it's actually two words. That part of your brain, the part of your brain that is shaped by God or is growing by your interactions with God is called the anterior cingulate. When that part of your brain is strong and built up, it helps you understand and experience God as personal and compassionate. In other words, it helps you really experience the way God knows and cares about you and about me. Recently, science discovered that the number one way to grow the strength of your anterior cingulate is through a daily practice of prayer. When you give just 10 minutes a day to prayer, you're exercising that part of your brain in the same way you exercise a muscle. The more you do it, the more that part of your brain grows. Now, you may be sitting here thinking that 10 minutes a day feels like a lot, and I get that, but we don't have to start at 10 minutes a day. Let's start slowly, because we all have questions about how to pray. And I think that's because we aren't sure what to say or if we're doing it right. To begin with, how do we even know what to say? Are we supposed to use fancy words or is there a script we should read? How do we know if we're saying the right things? Are we supposed to only pray in church or can we pray elsewhere? Should it be some quiet and private place? Do we have to be alone or can we pray with others? There's so many questions. Then we have the, the question, I mentioned it last week, I don't know what to do with my hands. Are they supposed to be over here? Do we pray out loud? Do we pray inside our head? Should we write them down? Is there supposed to be a time limit? You just said 10 minutes. Does it have to be 10 minutes? I mean, it, there, there's just so much. And I don't know about you, but when I have so many questions like that about a topic, I just start to shut down. It's pretty easy to see why talking to God can be a challenge, right? Well, here's a truth that might surprise you. People have been asking questions about prayer for a really, really long time. In fact, all sorts of people were asking the same types of questions even when Jesus was on earth. So if you're wondering about any of that stuff about prayer, you're in good company. And we can actually find a good example right in the book of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13. And this is what it says. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, this may sound familiar to you. This is a prayer that we pray very often here at church called the Lord's Prayer. And the reason we use it is because Jesus literally told us, this is how you should pray. 
It's important to note that before Jesus shared this prayer, he pointed out some other things about praying in his sermon. He encouraged us to be real, to avoid praying just to impress other people, to be honest. God already knows how we feel, so why not be honest about it when we pray? Finally, he encouraged us to be consistent, to not just pray once and walk away, but to make it a regular part of our lives. So what's the right way to pray? By being real and being consistent. That's all there is to it. And that's exactly what Jesus modeled for us in the Lord's Prayer. You see, this simple prayer can really give us a lot of answers to questions we have about prayer. When we're not sure what to say, or if we're doing it right, or how we're supposed to start, Jesus gave us this prayer to be the answer. And it really comes down to three simple things. Thanks, please, and sorry. That's all there is to it. Jesus modeled the way we can pray by doing those three things. He began by speaking words of thanks, by talking about God's greatness and showing gratitude for how awesome God is. Then Jesus shared his requests with God, asking God to do things like provide and forgive. He took a moment to confess any mistakes or wrongs and ask for God's forgiveness. Thanks, please, sorry. It's as simple as that. And some days, those might be the only words that you have to pray. Other days, you might have more words to offer. Maybe the words Jesus spoke when he shared the Lord's Prayer are the words you want to pray, and that's awesome too. But if you're struggling with where to start, when you're being honest and real with God, saying thanks, please, and sorry can be a really good starting place for you. Tell God what you're thankful for. And then tell God what you need. And finally, let God know where you need forgiveness. Again, this is just a starting place. The more you pray, the more comfortable you will become with prayer. And the more comfortable you become, the more you'll have to say. The only thing you have to remember is be real and be consistent. The rest is up to you. If you want to tell God about your day or how annoying your little brother or sister is, God wants to hear it. God is 100% completely and totally on team you. And that means God wants every direct message you've got to send through prayer. See, here's the thing we really want to understand about prayer. Prayer isn't about the words you say, but the way you pray. It's your heart that matters. It's not about the fancy words or the right timing or the perfect setting or any of those things. It's about your heart to connect with God. Your heartfelt honesty is what connects you and us to God through prayer. So if you're being real and consistent when it comes to prayer, then you can be sure that you're going to find that connection with God. Remember, prayer isn't about the words you say, but the way you pray. I'm sure everyone in this room has different levels of experience with prayer. Some of you might pray regularly, while others of you might be wondering how to start. Some of you might not be interested at all, but wherever you are, I want to encourage you to give it a try this week. Maybe try one of these things. Write down the words, thanks, please, and sorry. If you're not sure what to pray, or maybe have never even tried before, start there. Secondly, be real with God. God already knows it. So why try and hide it from him? Be real. Just tell him how you're feeling. Thirdly, be consistent. Remember what we said about the anterior cingulate? It takes daily commitment to prayer to start changing it. So this week, try making that commitment to be consistent in prayer, even if it's just a minute or two on the way to school or a minute before you fall asleep in bed. Commit to giving prayer a try this week. I think as you do, you'll be surprised by how quickly your connection to God can grow. Remember, prayer isn't about the words you say, but about the way you pray. So I want to challenge you to commit to giving it a try this week. So as we finish up, I want you to think about this question. What's one thing that might keep you from giving prayer a try?